So um, I enrolled in that school, and Marilyn Henry called me one day in Maxine and said, come on over, we got an audition for you for uh, Jerk and Soap. Yeah. Okay. So I go down to Cunningham and Walsh, and I walk into this room, and like there's all these gorgeous, blonde, model, trophy girl women with long legs, with incredible Barbie bodies, and big blue eyes, and I'm like, I go, Marilyn, what am I doing here? I mean, I belong in this room with these girls, come on, this is like, you know, totally. She goes, take the copy, go into the ladies' room, and don't come out until you have it memorized. These girls are models, but they're not actresses. Uh, you can do this. So I go in the bathroom, and thank God, I have, you know, I could memorize it fast. It was 30 seconds a copy, but 30 sure. seconds isn't that much. Compared to what we do on this no. day. You, you yeah. had no idea, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> so I did, and in those days, they didn't put anybody on um, camera, you know, in the audition. It was literally all men, 25 or 27 men, all in suits, sitting around a big conference table in the audition room. Yeah. So I came out, I hopped up on the table, I sat in the middle, and I did the 30 seconds of copy. And it was 30 seconds, hi, I'm... Um, Why did you hop on the table? Because you were supposed to be in a bathtub. I was supposed to be oh, taking a bath in a yeah. bubble bath. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm yeah, bathing yeah. with jerk and soap. It's a, the best way to save money or yeah. copy with something like that. And... Um, Spot. I booked yeah. a spot. So that spot ran literally for three years. They kept oh, renewing. And my. all it was was scale. But they ran it like all day long on all the soap operas. That's yeah. amazing. And like the first year I made like $25,000. And the oh second year I made like $35,000. And then the third year yeah. I made more than that. Which, I mean, that's a lot of money now. That was a ton of money then. Oh my gosh. That was gosh. like seven times what it yeah, is now. Yeah, that's amazing. Because you know, like, this is a long time ago. I was young. Yeah. So, I mean, ha talk about luck of the draw, right? right? Well, but I mean, you were ready for the Well, moments. you were working, too. I mean, it was an opportunity that showed up and you were prepared for were, it, too. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, all, that, all that stuff that you did paid off. The lessons, like, know? over the years, a lot of people have asked me, like, what, you know, moms, and what should I tell my kids? You know, they want to go to college, they want to get right. into acting. Yeah. Right. What should I say? And I would say, the, an education, it, it's not where you get the education from, but you have to educate yourself. Absolutely. You just show yeah. up for stuff. Yeah. Because you know? when you get the opportunity, you have to sure. be able to do it. Right. Yeah. yeah, and that's so, that's great. And yeah. then and then so you're doing. Did you just do more commercials after that? Because sometimes you get one and then you're well, kind of doing you commercials. Were also airing during the day on like so. Did, was that the introduction to soap operas? Where like, people are like, what? Yeah. They're like, who's this girl that's in all of her commercials? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be great cross promotion if we put her in the dang show? It was. Well, I I got booked <laughs> to do a part on my first soap gig was uh, Edge of Night. Yes. It was right. just a couple days. Edge of Night. And it was a scene with um, uh, Tony Craig and Dixie Carter. Oh my gosh. Dixie, was, yeah. Was, was Barry was Newman on Edge of Night? Do you remember Barry Newman? I didn't work with him, but I think yeah. he was, yeah. yeah. Is this something that was offered to you, or was this just keep through auditioning? my agent in, the, in uh, New York. It came through. And, and not, so it was, an, it was an audition? Or I think did, it was an audition. Like, you're the soap girl, remember. come on our show. Yeah, no, I think it was an audition. You know, it was so long ago, I don't sure, remember. Sure, sure. But I remember doing the part, coming in, and I you knew soap operas. I watched soap operas with my mom and my oh, grandma yeah, sure. when I was a little girl, you know. Yeah. Black and white TV, no clicker, you had to get up and change the channel. But we'd go, my mom was raised us kids, you know, so my elementary school in in Bergenfield, New Jersey was Franklin yeah. School, you'd walk home for lunch. That's the safety patrol, you'd walk home for lunch, you'd eat your lunch, you'd go back to school. Oh wow. Know? So I watched wow. the soaps. Yeah. yeah. They were fifteen minutes long in those days. Yeah. You, and one was a half an hour. So you'd watch in an hour you'd watch three soaps. Wow. So I knew soap operas. I mean, yeah. I knew it like soap, so that's what. So I did that one little part on Edge of Night, and then uh, by that time, Murray, uh, Murray, my Murray the K was a disc jockey. We're living together. We'd done the, you know, Schaefer music. He had the clubs. We're yeah, doing yeah, all yeah. that, and we're sitting in a bagel nosh across the street from where we live. And I said, you know what? I want to be on a soap opera. That would be the perfect job. Little did I know. They were like a half an hour long. I thought you worked a half an hour a day. <laughs> and you're yeah. done. You're like, I said, this is good. <laughs> this is good. Sounds easy. <laughs> quick, do quick money, <laughs> quick money. So, That's funny. So I went and auditioned for Ryan's Hope. My agency had a great agency. Yeah. Kaplan Vite, which was Donna's agency yep. also. And um, they sent me up and... I'm doing this, they gave me this monologue, so I'm in, again, no tape, you sit in the producer's office, I'm doing this monologue, 
and it was very dramatic. And I'm like, very dramatic, very dramatic. And it was New York. She's, like, getting, she's getting into her yeah. jersey. Her jersey's coming. <laughs> I know, I her jersey's it. coming back. I see. I, 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 I've never heard that in your voice until you started talking about jersey, and now I, I, I love. I, I do jersey. I, I, I do what, parts. I when I make my casting. I what makes me feel like you, you're yeah. getting more comfortable with us? Those are my dialects. Like, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit of Brooklyn. Like yeah, I love, gardens, and I like Brooklyn. Yeah, I love that. Oh. So your audition for Ryan's Hope. So I, and and was in the office and doing this monologue, crying my ass out because it's a very dramatic scene. And the phone rings, and the producer answers the phone during your audition. In, in the middle of my monologue, cool. as I'm crying. Oh, not cool. And I'm like, okay, so I go out on the street, and no cell phones in those days. There's yeah. a phone booth, so I call Gloria, who's my agent at Kaplan Bay. It was Lily and Gloria, and I say, ah, and she goes. Um, she goes, hi, happy to hear. And I said, yeah, it didn't go so well. I was in the middle of my monologue and he answered the phone. She said, well, that's because he said he had seen enough. You've got the part. Come on. Wow. Swear to God. So then she wow. said, but go over to One Life to Live <laughs> and meet like a... with Doris Quinlan <laughs> because they have a part on One Life to Live that they would like you to read for. And I'm like, well, why would I do that if they just offer me this one? She goes, one life to live might pay a little better. Go, just go over there and see what happens. So I go over, I read for One Life to Live, and they offered me that part. Look at you go. So I was like, yeah, it was just were these cold, Were these cold reads too? Were they giving you the script when you walked yeah. in the room? Yeah, they were all cold in those days. This is like no going to a buffet. Machines. There was no email. Yeah. You know, you, it was just walk in, get it cold, read it. and yeah. But I was lucky. I had a good memory. You yeah. know, I could always like learn stuff fast. So I could pretty much read it in the thing and know yeah. it, be pretty much off book quick sure you know? yeah so wow um, yeah so um i ended up taking the one life to live one because it paid more uh well <laughs> the, it wasn't a whole lot more money but actually for me at that time well, it sure. was a lot of money because they offered me like uh, like two and a half shows a week which oh, okay. was a lot, a lot of soap yeah, opera yeah, 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 and it was the guarantee yeah. was strong you know it was yeah. like a lot more money than and what, I mean, like when, one day was how like many, what, what you'd work a week yeah how many how many uh did they still do year contracts or two years three years you remember they said well doris quinlan whom i adore i go in there and it was to work with Jameson Parker and, and yes. you know, Jackie Courtney and George Weinholt and, and Erica Slazak. I mean, all yeah. these amazing people were on totally, that show. Gerald yeah. Anthony and yeah. um, Kathy Breach. Judith Light came on later. Yeah, That's Judith right. Light. I mean, right. I mean, we had like an amazing Michael Storm. Yeah. Um, an amazing cast. And she, I signed, I think it was a three year contract, but Doris Quinlan, who was the producer, called me in her office and she said, okay, I. I shouldn't even be telling you this. We're doing an arc. It's called an arc with you. You're the part we always ask you to sign for three years, but the part is probably going to last about six months. You oh, can't wow. tell anybody. Yeah. But there is a beginning, a middle, and an end to the story. She said, and I'm only telling you because I can see you're a sensitive person, and I don't want you to feel. And I have to call <laughs> you back in here in six months and oh, tell you that yeah. you're not on anymore. That it will have anything to do with your work or your performance. That's, that's nice. Really that was really nice of her. Yeah, that's really so kind. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Kind, yeah. right? That I got sure. Lucky. Yeah, that's so amazing. And then you went because then you don't have any preconceptions. Hope. If anything's extra, then you're like, cool, I stayed. And if not, you're like, okay, I knew from the beginning. Yeah, that's very nice. Did you ever think though, like, if I'd gone to Ryan's Hope, maybe it would have lasted longer? Or, no, no. Well, I ended up staying on one life. She calls me back in six months later and yeah. says, okay, so we were supposed to kill you off, but the audience likes the character so much. You're in. <laughs> you're right. staying. Oh, you're right. here. Oh, you're right. not going anywhere. So it was a bonus. I was like, yeah, yeah. Yes. it was a bonus, and yeah. I ended up on that show then. For uh, two and a half years. Yeah. Nice. And then. Um, and you were living in the city at the time. Yes. In so the it was city. an easy commute. I, I could literally walk to work because that the studio was on 66th Street on the west side. Yeah. And, and I was, was it always in that same studio ever like because I remember. Was there. Yes, yeah. It was same one. Same one. Yeah. It was from Des Artistes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. yeah. And I think ABC's buildings were there too for after that, like publicity. I remember going to well, 66. Wasn't it the same yeah. building as the View? At the time, like, or, or I dude, she's not a PI anymore. I know, right? Yeah, I'm trying. You know what? <laughs> I just remember that's where our, our where it was, and I remember yeah. going to Cafe des Artistes for lunch, and then yeah. to all those cool places were there. And I remember one time my building, we were living at Sherman Square, mm. which was Seventy uh, First Street and Broadway, a big high rise, like a. <sighs> 40 story building yeah. and, and I had a place on the 20th floor yeah. it was fabulous with this amazing. View, you know yeah. a, I mean, like a two bedroom yeah. two bath place and one time 
there was a flood in our building and I remember being at work, I was shooting at work in the flood and um, I would, I, my, I had German Shepherd, my dog Ruffian was in the apartment. I was like really oh. nervous because somebody said, oh, it's hot water. And literally my dog was on the dining room table. Like, like the, because it was boiling yeah, water. Geez. And they let me go home. They were like, I, I was like, please, it's like five blocks. I can run really fast. I just need to go get my dog out. You wait, know? wait, was this live then? We were live on tape. Okay. So, yeah, we, we had to give our cameras to the to the 5 o'clock news. Was it 5 o'clock news or 6 o'clock news? So we would start our show, and we had to be finished in an hour. There was no pickups, wow. no do-overs. Wow. And we changed, we used to joke, you changed your top half. If you had a wardrobe, and in those days, sometimes the wardrobe change was three times in a show. You changed your top half first, because if you didn't have time at the bottom, they'd shoot you tight. Yeah, you had to change. You had two minute commercial great. break to shoot your. Com you know, you were literally two people were ripping off your clothes, and we had stage managers in those days that would, like, you would be doing a scene and the show had to be out on the commercial time when it had to be out. So they would either go stretch. You know, they pull their hands apart to say stretch, talk slow. You got to like wow. slow down the scene or tighten. Speed it up meant was this, and right. tighten was like this. Because you had to end the scene, they would do it, then they'd do like 10. They'd give you a 10 second countdown. Five, right. four, three, two. You had to be done with the last line. Did, so that's how I learned. Wow. Did you guys do soaps? Did, yeah. Back, in, back when you guys were shooting like that, did you guys do love scenes similar? Like, or. In well, your, all your love scenes are short, so they I didn't know. have to lengthen anything. <laughs> <laughs> so they wouldn't be saying the stretch hand. They wouldn't be saying stretching. Yeah. They'd, yeah. they'd be trying to be like, I'm done. <laughs> it's, I'm done with this love scene, guys. Can we cut to commercial? But like when you're doing... Calgon, take me away. <laughs> like, I don't know. When you, like, I, I guess when you're doing a love scene, you can you can fill and you can make it work. But that like that's, that's interesting to me, doing a love scene live or this, live to tape. Live. They that, tap your foot. They would. Okay, that's what... Yeah. If you had to hurry up, they'd go like this. <laughs> that's amazing. And if they had to slow it down, they'd go slow. Yeah. And, and mine were all with Jameson Parker. I mean, how fun was that? Sure. He was married to Bonnie. Uh, Bonnie Parker, who was my... She had this t-shirt. She was a photographer and an uh, airline flight attendant. And she had to say, Bonnie Parker shoots people. I always loved her. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, <laughs> and they lived a that's block right. from us. They yeah. lived, uh, like, right a block away in an apartment. So we were very close friends. We'd get together all the oh, time. Oh, fun. So all my scenes were with Jameson, and I remember when I first started, like, I was really nervous. Like, my first day on that show, I had, like, they had, used to call it the tease, the prologue, the first, and then the yeah. acts, you know. The show was, um, I think it was 45 minutes in those days. It used to split time with another show. I don't know. I mean, it was GH. I think we shared time. One like oh, wow. Hour. Yeah, before GH went to an hour. And um, we do, and I remember going to Doris, going, I don't know, Doris, you know, I, I, I don't know if this is going to be good. I just feel like like I'm going to throw up before we have to shoot. You see, it's like so much dialogue and so much stuff. And I'm gonna, she says, just give it a month. If you still hate it in a month, you know, I'll let you go. There are a lot of people on the butt, but you're going to be fine. And then, of course, a week later, Jameson was so great. You got sure. used to it. Yeah. It didn't take long to, you know, feel like they were very welcoming to me. Yeah. To make me feel, because I was the most inexperienced one on the set. They all knew what they were doing. Yeah. And they were really good people. And I was like, oh, can I keep up with these people? But they were kind to me, and nobody ever made me feel like, oh, she's the newbie. You know, she doesn't yeah. know what she's doing. Yeah. So, um, it worked out really well. That's yeah. amazing. That was two and a half years. That was two and a half years there. And then did I... Did that end just story? Did story just dictate it, or were you done? Yeah, story. They killed off the character. The okay. character became an alcoholic and, and ended up, like, a, it was like this drug. I had to gain weight. I had to gain weight because I was drinking a lot. Well, I didn't have to, but I did because I wanted a little puffy sure. in the face because I was still young, you know what yeah. I mean? So I wanted to get that look. And I didn't drink, and I didn't take any drugs or do anything, so I didn't have that look. Right. Um, <laughs> so I had to gain I, weight to do it. Yeah. And then they had me dying. You know, they had Lana McLean was my name on that show. Lana was like dying. I had this black silky slip on and like this hair. I had actually brown hair at the time. Okay. Long brown hair. And um, I'm at this Beatlemania at the theater one day, which was on Broadway that Murray was special consultant for Beatlemania. Yeah. And we lived like in our neighborhood, um, like John and Yoko were in our neighborhood. And he was yeah. friends with all the Beatles, so we get to I got to meet them and hang That's out with them. Wow. Really. That's so pretty cool. Yeah. Was pretty cool. So Murray was asked to be special consultant for Beatlemania, and on in the theater, and it was at the Schubert, not the Schubert, which theater in New York? I came to the Schubert here. Well, whatever theater was in New York, and who's sitting next to me? This man one night and watching the show, and he looks at me and he goes, "Oh, um, I'm Fred Silverman." Um, you know, I've seen it on the sh on the shows. You, you have it. Would you like to do a sitcom? 
because he was director of programming at ABC. Oh my wow. gosh. And I had been on One Life to Live. Yeah. So he kind of knew what was going on. How would you feel about it? But in those days, so about me, duh, I say, you know, you know I kind of like the drama. I'm on the soap opera. He goes, yes, I'm aware. <laughs> and, and, uh, he goes, I'm a programmer. I'm like, oh. So he said, you know, it's like, but in those days, to be on a sitcom, you had to kind of play like dumb bubblehead. And I uh, didn't want to play dumb bubblehead. I really felt I'm a really intelligent woman. Yeah. You know, I never got parts because of my looks. I got parts, I thought, because of my creativity or sure. my brain, you know, and I didn't want to like do what I. So, me, of course, duh. See, this is where if someone in my family had known about the business, it says, Jack, go in, see what, sure. meet with them, see what, see what sure. they say. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. but, but anyway, it worked out good because um, a couple days later, um, I got a phone call from Jackie Smith, who was head of daytime, um, and she said, would you be interested in going out to California to do a part on General Hospital? They've been, they've been trying to... Let me see that, Brad. Yeah, Bobby's in 40 and 41. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. So this we'll is perfect pause. timing because oh. when we get back, go to Cal. We'll just talk about coming to California. Oh, okay. We edit this anyway. We oh, edit the. Oh, okay. We edit it We're down. We're not live to tape here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this Cutting is so. Around. This is so much fun. This Thank is you. amazing. I, I have no I, idea. I can't <laughs> wait. Like, I can't wait to get back into it. So, but <laughs> so go go block and then we'll okay. we'll, we'll go from California on. Hey friends. So at this point. Uh, this was back in 2019. Jackie did go upstairs, and she came back down, um, and we kept recording, and we got so many great stories, but uh, we didn't start the camera again. So you can either uh, find this episode on your podcast platforms, or we included the audio uh, here. So the, the video is, there's no more video, but you can listen. Uh, we're going to continue the audio so you can hear the rest of the episode here, but um, we'll also link to the the full audio version that you can find on all all podcast apps. So if you want to hear more, either continue watching or go over there. Um, thank you, everybody, for listening. Jackie, we love you. We miss you. You know, Jackie Smith is calling saying, and I said, well, are you offering me the part? She said, well, I want to know if you'd be interested in the part um, because... If you, if you decide, if it works out, it will be yours. You won't have to audition. But Douglas Marland is the writer. And we're going through, I guess, GH. They were considering maybe taking it off the air at the time. Oh, wow. So I didn't know. The ratings were really low at the time. So there's this big changeover. Gloria Monty was coming in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Doug Marlin was the head writer. She said, so Doug, the head writer will have to meet, we'll have to meet with you. And assuming that he approves you, then we will offer you the part. Great. Like, oh, okay. I mean, she said, we don't need your audition. You've been on One Life to Live for, you know, two and a half years. We know you can act. Right. Like, oh, okay. But this was a big boost to my confidence because I was still very young. Sure. You know? And so I was, like, at the time, 23, just about to turn 24. Yeah. And to be offered a role, like a big contract, and to go to California right at the same time my boyfriend has got to be in California. I mean, it sounds amazing. Talk about the angels lining yeah. up in your guides to <clears throat> say, hey, yeah. it's a wonderful life. Right. So um, Douglas Marlin drove into the city. And for the people that are listening that don't know, Douglas Marlin is one of the all-time great, great legend writers of daytime. He was like... You what know, did he do before? Um, before GH, I couldn't tell you. But yeah. I just know on GH, he was like... Amazing. And yeah. he had come with, like, an amazing background. I think he had sure. written a lot of stuff. I'm stones. sure he did, yeah, yeah. And he's just was loved, and he knew what he was doing. And, and um, to get a Douglas Marlin at that time was a big deal. And you met him show. in this, when you say he drove into the city, he drove into New York? Into New York yeah. City because he lived up in Connecticut, which is another story I'll tell you after I finish this. <laughs> <laughs> so he drives in to come to my apartment to meet me in my apartment. Well, wow. Murray's in my apartment, yeah. Yeah. which is, you know, a nice apartment, but... In those days, it was all lavender. It was I always liked decorating, so it was all like lavender carpeting and lavender walls, like Ooh. that pinky lavender. It was really pretty, and then these gold. Ugh, this is gonna sound so Murray, techie, Murray, but it was really Murray beautiful. was a good sport, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah, he let me do it. He let me do it, but he liked all that. He liked all that zhuzh, you know. Yeah, so, <laughs> the zhuzh, I love he that. He liked the zhuzh. Sure. And he liked that I was always a girly girl. Yeah. I liked the decorating, and yeah. I was like, you know, put my makeup on and you know, dressed sure. up as a dancer and young, yeah. you know, what the And he was fun. in show business too so he was and, and he worked. was a very um effervescent personality and yeah. a dan you know was a dancer and a disc jockey and gift of the gab and you know he was amazing he was amazing 
Um, I loved him so much. So anyway, Douglas Marlin comes in, and our furniture was like real low sofas and lots of cushions. And there's Douglas Marlin sitting on the floor <laughs> on my cushions on my lavender apartment, and literally he stayed talking to me for about four hours. So I, I knew it was going well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, no, talking story or just getting to know you or yeah, what? Yeah, just most – well, the first couple hours was just conversation. We're yeah. talking and laughing and joking and – and then all of a sudden, it was like some story, and he told me a little about what he wanted to do with the character, and I loved, you know, what he was saying. Yeah. And then um, he left, and I my phone rang, and I don't remember it was later that afternoon or the next morning, and it was Jackie Smith saying, well, you want the part? You're going to California. And I'm like, yeah, heck yeah, I want the part. Yeah. So, um, so- Ken Schreiner had been on the show just right before me. And I guess he had read with a lot of the girls that they were auditioning oh, yeah. for the part because it was right. coming to be the Laura Scotty Bobby triangle. Oh, yeah, sure. yeah, it was a big yeah. deal. So, yeah. so did they make you a Spencer after, or was that the plan? I was Spe- us Bobby Spencer right then and there. Right then and in. there. Right then and there. So and was, Tony wasn't on the show. Tony wasn't on the after. show yet. Right. He That's why I was after. asking. Right. Okay. So. Yeah, would you know like So they made him your brother. They made him my brother. He yeah. had actually auditioned to be Tony had actually auditioned to be Mitch Williams, who worked with Jane Elliott, Tracy Quartermain. Yeah. Who was a congressman, you know, but he needed to be that guy needed to be real white bread, waspy, blonde hair, blue eyes. They yeah, wanted yeah. that look. And Tony, you know, yeah. wasn't yeah. that look. So he yeah. didn't get that part, but they liked his audition so much, they wrote Luke for him. Wow. Created oh, wow. Luke for him. That was That's... smart. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That was smart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Asher Bronner was on as Roy at the time. Maybe it was before A came on as Roy. You know, and so it was all this. So you got thrown in, stuff. kind of with with Ken. Ken right away, and I, Emily McLaughlin was on. Jesse yes. Brewer, yes. Gerald Anthony. You know, who was like hysterical. I loved. He, he told me where to get the best Italian food and lasagna, and he used to read everything off the prompter and make it look like he wasn't doing that. <laughs> 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 Those days when we had prompters. Yeah. And the only one that ever used him was Gerald, but they kept him because he was such a big soap star. Yeah. You know, nobody yeah. would like tell him, no, we're not going to have a prompter anymore. <laughs> you didn't use, did you use prompters in New York? Um, I've never used them. Even when, when we but had were them. they available? I'm trying to remember. I, I'm probably pretty 99% sure we had them. But, you know, my memory of that is not because I never used them even sure. here. I never used them. So right. yeah. I don't have, like, a connection to whether we had right. them or not. Yeah. I do remember they got rid of them here pretty soon. It mo- the money was budget. Oh, yeah. It's it a was lot just of, yeah, yeah. Like going over the budget. Yeah. But I remember coming, and so he, my deal to come out to California was, now this is when ABC owned ABC. It was before this is Capital Cities. Cities, before Disney, before oh, all that. okay. They gave me a bungalow in the Beverly Hills Hotel um, for three to six months. Okay. I had my dog, Ruffian, so it had to be a bungalow because the dog wasn't allowed in the regular hotel. So sure. they gave me the bungalow. With the dog. They gave me three sets of first class tickets so in I could. In the Beverly Hills Hotel. In the Beverly Hills Hotel. That's Back nice. and forth so I could go. Where were you shooting at the point? Uh, the shoot, well, the shooting was um, we, the old Desi Lu studio. We used to call it Camp Coanga on Coanga. Down, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Where they shot all the Desi Lu show. And those studios, you had they were outside. So the makeup room was a separate building from like Gloria's office, the office, yeah, like what yeah. we would call the fifth floor later, and then the stage. So it was raining. Not that it rains much in California, but you had to go outside to get to the sure. stage. Gosh. So it was like, yeah, I mean, it was so really old school. Like, like going, <laughs> going from the hair building yes, to the set with to an the umbrella. Set with yeah. an umbrella. Yeah, yeah. wow. And it, but it was exciting because I had watched all the other I Love Lucy shows. When Being I was on that set started. is so cool. So yeah, in that set. Oh, was man. Like, wow. Wow. The karma. Yeah, you for know. sure. The um, history is so awesome. So you're in the bungalow with your dog? With the dog. <laughs> you're so New York. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> My uh, dog. Yeah. <laughs> Three sets of first class tickets. Back and forth so I could come for the wardrobe fitting, you know, yeah. a couple of days before we had a shoot, and then come out. And Murray brings the dog, the dog, Ruffian, on the plane. He puts a patch on one eye and says, because everybody knew his Murray the K he was pretty, on like a lot of TV. So he, I'm sorry, he put a patch on the dog's eye or her on own? his eye? Oh, okay, say, I, I, was, I was checking <laughs> yeah. too. I'm no, like, oh, this is a special eye. needs dog. We never he said, <laughs> I need to bring the dog on the plane. I need him as a seeing eye dog because my other eye doesn't see well. Because <laughs> oh, oh, he wasn't going to put Ruffian downstairs because oh, in those days, right. the yeah. oxygen, there yeah, were problems. Sure. Yeah. And we didn't, and she was extremely well, all of our, we had a lot of German Shepherds, we were always trained 
seemed like. Yeah. They didn't even need to be on a leash. Sit, yeah. stay, you know, you right. could walk. But people don't know that. They see a big sure. black dog. They yeah, get scared. Like, right. So we'd always have her on leash, but she was like a mate. You'd stop walking, she'd sit. So we weren't worried on the plane. We knew she'd be fine, but right. she comes on the, Murray's got the patch, and they're all like, wait, <laughs> you're amazing. Murray the K, you're not blind? <laughs> and then he'd say, yeah, but my other eye's not good, and I poke myself in the eye, and I'm like, oh, okay. So she, she's good. She can get on the plane, and we're just ready to take off, and they rev up the engines. Uh-oh. Oh. She starts howling. She oh, panics. And oh, she, she'd she never been on a plane before. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And this is... this is That's amazing. When they, yeah. So what did... did, did, did how, what happened? It was fun. She calmed down after a few minutes. But, you oh know, when she was... She made, but I love that oh. Murray had the chutzpah to put her on the plane. He yeah, was like, that's That's incredible. amazing because back then there probably wasn't support animals where you can bring your support goat on no, now. No, yeah. not a nothing like right. that. What yeah, a great nothing. name, Ruffian. That's Ruffian. So, I yeah. love that. Named after a race, race horse because Murray liked horses. Yeah. He used to go to the track a lot and watch the horses. Well, but just like the word Ruffian, Ruffian. has rough yeah. in it. Ru- yeah, Ruffian. Love it. Love she it. was a great dog. Yeah. I loved her. And yeah. then the, when we got um, we out here was Runner. Runner oh, okay. was in our other German Shepherd that we yeah. got here. So, oh, and, and so in uh, Beverly Hills Hotel and all that stuff, and a full-time limo and a driver. Bobby Grillo was my driver the whole time because I came from New York. Wow, so you, you had no car. So actually, we did have a car in New York, but we didn't bring it out. Did you have like, your driver's license? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you I did. I was a yeah. Jersey girl. Well, yeah. I wasn't sure. You yeah, know. yeah, I had a, I okay. had a Corvette. I always had Corvettes. I was like a Corvette girl. <laughs> so, so I did, and we got a place, literally. So Bobby was our driver. They gave me the limo and to get back and forth to work, Yeah, and um, we're looking for a place to live. Bobby, where should we, we live? And he goes, well, for you, either I'd say Beverly Hills or Marina Del Rey. <laughs> I'm like, well, I didn't had no clue what Marina Del Rey was. Right. And I said, well, which is closer to the studio? He goes, oh, Beverly Hills is a lot closer. I'm like, okay, let's go there. So he drives us up the hill. And literally, I was in town. I had one day. I had to find a place to live. I had to go to work, you know, the next day. He's got a Bic lighter. And we go into this house off of Coldwater on Beverly Hills. Hotels on Eden Drive. And we go in. It looked nice. You know, it was pretty. It was like the perfect size, exactly what we wanted. It was close because all you had to do was drive down Coldwater Canyon, make a left on Sunset. And you're there. And you're at the studio. Right. Which was great. So he's got the Bic lighter. There's electricity, I guess, was off because it was between tenants. You know, the ones yeah, that had yeah, been yeah, renting yeah, yeah. turned it off sure. and wasn't on yet. So we got the lighter, and I'm looking at him going, what, is the furniture nice? Like, <laughs> do I like it? Is the rug clean? Well, you know, because this is, this, is, this is rental, or are you going to buy it? No, rental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we weren't going to, you know, we had yeah. one day. It was like, right, no, just yeah, rent. Yeah. Just rent. Yeah. But it, was a, it ended up being great, you know. Yeah. We took it. Yeah. <laughs> Needless yeah. to say. So that, that was good. And um, it was... Wow. Exciting! It started on General Hospital, and then you know, ugh, General Hospital just hit. So I mean, what? Yeah. What year? What year was that? Did you start it? What did I start? Seventy. Uh, I actually worked like one or two days. I think it was seventy eight, and then seventy nine. My shows aired. Right. Uh, okay. So it was seventy nine because I've been on now. I've been on this is my forty third year. Wow. General Hospital. Yeah. Can you imagine? Which what? Is really good. So Kin Kin has you by like. A year or something is the longest yeah. running character or something yeah, like that? Yeah, like six months. So. Well, no, Leslie was on, actually. Oh, Right yeah. at the same time. It was Ken, Leslie, um, Stuart. Oh, that's Damon. right. When we yeah. talked to her, but she was like, But only been a few yeah. months. Like, yeah. like uh, maybe she was on, like, three months well, or six. Well, thank God yeah. Ken's not the... I know, doesn't have that thing to... Because yeah. he'd get a he'd get a t shirt made or something. <laughs> I know. Well, or yeah. get it, get he'd it be telling us <laughs> he'd be telling me every day. Get it embroidered into his like or yeah. embossed on his Vespa. We did a little tour like I don't know when it was the last year, the year before where we had our forty second year in Jersey of comedy clubs and like what you guys yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean, the comedy clubs and a lot of people came out and it was really really That's nice. so fun, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. So then my phone rings one day. I'm out there, and I get a phone call from Doris Quinlan, who is oh, my yeah, one life to live one life to live producer. And she says, oh, we're coming out to California. She, her uh, partner was Hazel, who did, had used to do the wardrobe. Hazel and I are coming out to California, and da, 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 just so I invite her over. You know, I said, oh, come on over. I'll, yeah. you know, we'll make lunch. I had a day off. Make right. lunch, and we're, we're having lunch. And, you know, I'm telling her, oh, you know, I, what, what do you watch on TV? I'm like, oh, well, you know, I like that show, Bewitched. So a week later, she calls me. She says, I'm having a dinner party. I want you to come to my party. I said, okay, thanks. So Marie and I go over there. Who's sitting at her dinner party? Elizabeth didn't. Berkeley? Elizabeth, Elizabeth Montgomery. 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 Yeah, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Montgomery. Montgomery. She's the girl yeah. from yeah. Oh, yeah, here we go. Elizabeth Montgomery. Here we Elizabeth go. Elizabeth Montgomery is sitting there, and it's like four people are at this dinner party. It's not like 12, 20 people. Was her hair really high? Four people. She was gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. But she's sitting at the table, and she looks, and she goes, 
I watch your show every day. <gasps> I I love your work as an I mean I'm sitting there and I'm going Elizabeth Montgomery's telling me she thinks I'm a good actress. Oh, oh my god, I was like awesome. Ugh. and I said so I've awesome. watched every show you've ever done on right. Bewitched. I, I I said I learned acting from watching you. You know what I mean? That's amazing. I've watched everyone through all the different Darrens for all right. the different shows. Yeah, there's a Tabitha, lot of Darrens. There's right. a lot of Darrens, it's <laughs> Kabatha, the kid, the mom, Agnes Moorhead, you know, all of them. I was like, Oh my god. Well and what a gra- I love that show <laughs> and, and thinking about what I, I liked it. Thinking about what you said earlier about like not wanting to do sitcoms because you know, but on that show she was the brain and the guys were the bu- bubble heads, yeah. right? Darren was the bumbling fool and she was the one that was so just like I, together. I, the power yeah. she had the power. She had the, she power. Had the power. Yeah, yeah. loved that show. And but yeah. she also had the the um, feminine softness. Likeability part to her character yeah. that she yeah. was never trying to like outshine her husband or make him look weak. It was always, oh, when Darren, you know, fighting with him, like Darren wouldn't approve. Got to keep Darren happy. I mean, he's my husband. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there was her. There was a dichotomy. She, her character was interesting because yeah. she brought a lot to it. Yeah. yeah. But of course, you know, when they asked me about sitcoms, I didn't have the amount of confidence to think I could ever be like, you know, Elizabeth Montgomery. Like right. I, I assumed because I was young. And bouncy, <laughs> a bit of a people pleaser, yeah. that I was going to get the bubblehead part. You yeah, know? sure, sure. Yeah, it just goes to show perspective. There was a big lesson in that yeah. in life that you, you know, one, you create your reality too, but your perspective really does determine the reality of your future. Yeah. So if you if you can envision it and whatever you believe or what you see for yourself, that's who you become. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. the walk for sure. We, we do talk you know. about that. Well, that yeah. is true. What an exciting time. So, so that's. So, so what? What? So you were here, and then when did GH kind of like, you know, what? When Within did the it, next when couple did it years, pop where it, you guys were on quick boom. TV Guide magazine right away and, and doing all that stuff happened so fast. It was so like really the, Gloria Monty turned the the. Um, we had a meeting one day. We're at Disney Blue Studio, and she calls me. It was, it was one of my first couple of days on the set, and she's like my character, and and I go Gloria, Barbara Spencer. I said, you know, Barbara. <laughs> the care it sounds like it's a beautiful name, but it sounds kind of a sophisticated name. And I see Bobby as kind of you know, if you wanted to be to have such an Doug Marlon told me an agenda. Yeah. You know, she's gonna get her way. She's gonna be at times a little sneaky, a little wrong side of the tracks, a little like desperate to get what she wants, but really smart. I said good I have to play the characters really smart. I don't wanna play a dumb character. Right. Um and she's, I said, Barbara, though, I need her to be, if she's going to be all these things, she's got to be positive. She's got to be fun. She's got to be able to laugh. She's got to be a bit entertaining because she's got to be likable. I mean, you can't just make her like this slithering snake who's, sure. you know, not interesting. So I said, Barbara, can we, like, change the name? And she's like, she looks at me, she goes, how about Barbie? And I said, no, not Barbie. <laughs> Barbie with the booze and the blonde hair. I'm not competing with that. Right. She goes, Bobby. And I was like, yes, Bobby. Was the perfect name, right? So that's how my character got my name. Wow, Bobby. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Came out when this like you know two minute meeting with Gloria in her office of discussing you know. And she already been established as Barbara, but you could easily make it a nickname. Yeah, well, it was right early on. Yeah, and then when you know when Tony came on, he used to call me Barbara Jean, my full name, uh, Barbara yeah, Jean. But he was the only one yeah. that ever called me Barbara Jean. Right, because it was Bobby Spencer. And right, Bobby Spencer. You know, it was like fun and yeah. And I dyed my hair red when I came out to California. I had been Lana. I had gained weight. I literally did not eat for four days. Lost all the weight. I was young then. So I, I dropped it. I wanted Bobby to be thin. It's called fasting. And bouncy fasting. Yeah, I mean, at the time. And I never had an eating disorder, so this was hard for me not to eat. But I dropped like 10, 12 pounds in four days. It was like, wow. boom. And I dyed my hair red yeah. because I wanted Bobby to be, I thought red would be fun. Red curly hair, different. You, but you, And you had had some redness in your hair before because you, you talked about being the dancer and you were the redhead. Like, so yeah. yeah what, I had reddish brown hair, yeah. so it wasn't a big difference. But as Bobby, I wanted it redder. redder Bobby, sure. when I was younger, my hair was really red on the show. Oh yeah. And I was told at one time they had a rule that nobody else could be hired on the show that had red hair. All right. <laughs> like my family that member. Spot is filled. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and now you know it's all changed. Laura writes blonde, and sure. Jocelyn like oh my family. That's changed yeah, that's over just, the years. Yeah, for well, sure. Yeah. But um, for yeah, for a long time. So do you remember a, a, a do you remember being a part of that that shift where? Did life change when all of a sudden, okay, we're just actors on this show, and in New York, I'm sure you're a public figure, but all of a sudden you're in L.A. and you're on this show that is now a kind of a national or international phenomenon. Like, do you remember this? Do you do you have a do you remember having a sense of that or no? Um, I knew the show. You know, it's 
whatever becomes normal to you is your yeah, normal. Of course. And I remembered as I was leaving New York, Win Hanman, uh, you know, at American Place Theater, I'd taken a lot of lessons with him, and he was like a really great teacher and a really, you know, like an icon in the business. And he said, don't go do that soap opera. He said, you have the potential to be a great actress, but you're going to do that soap opera, and you're going to get into some really bad habits, and you're just going to stay forever, and you're never going to want to leave because you'll get used to the money. Don't do that. He goes, you could. And I'm like, Win. I, they want to pay me to earn a living, to be on a TV show. What? Yeah. So I, I should I should turn it down and stay in New York and, and slave work away as a for PI the art. or be you know stay yeah. in the bunny club or do my modeling things? I said that goes away pretty soon. You know what I mean? Because at the time I was twenty three, turning twenty four, yeah. I said no. So um, I I never had any regrets. I was so glad that I came out. But it's interesting. Yeah. Again, it's perspective. Like sure. how do you see your mm-hmm. life? You know. Yeah. And I loved, I loved the fact that Murray was coming out, and I was in love with Murray. We were together. We weren't married yet. We got married the following year at Tavern on the Green. Oh, and nice. Friends, yeah, everybody came. I had like 12 bridesmaids. <laughs> and he had like all the, you know, my friends here came and were my yeah. bridesmaids in New York. And, they, you know, it was fun. And Did we, you guys keep your place in New York? No, we got rid of it. You got rid of it. We yeah. got rid of it. And, oh, I killed myself because. Yeah, you, you think? Like, look at what now the you places think? are. And then I bought a few years later. I was writing this book in 1984 with my friend Diana Whitley, who you might remember. She's a photographer and a writer. Anyway, I was doing this book, and uh, Simon & Schuster was publishing it, and she calls me. She had a place in L.A. and New York. She calls me. She goes, my co-op is going, my building is going co-op in New York, and the penthouse upstairs is available, and the guy who owns it is a, um, rents it, has the opportunity to buy it. He just wants to flip it. He wants to make $25,000 on it. Do you want to buy it? So I go, uh, is it nice? So you know, again, no cell phones, no, you can't <laughs> sure, look. Yeah, is yeah. it nice? She goes, I don't know. I'll go. I said, go up and look. So she's, you know, she says, I'll call you right back. She runs upstairs. She comes in. She goes, it's really nice. <laughs> it has a 180 degree view. And wow. she goes, it's just a one bedroom, but it has ice cream cake moldings on the ceilings and high ceilings and, and a, you know, fireplace and beautiful hand painted tiles in the bathroom. And she said, the kitchen's real small, but who needs a kitchen in New York? Right. And it was on Gramercy Park, key to the park. Elevator man, doorman, concierge, oh my 180, gosh. the whole half of the penthouse, top of the building. I'm like, okay, I'll take it. Because I was working. I had money saved. You yeah, know, what do you, sure. When you're that age, what do you, you spend money on anything? All I ever did was work. I never went shopping. So I had the money and I bought it and never used it. I mean, in those days. You just kept it rented or you just it was vacant? You, I didn't even rent it. It was vacant and and for like a long time. And at that time, my dad had gotten really sick. My dad had leukemia. And uh, I was flying back to pretty much every Friday on the red eye, thinking it might Mm. be the last time I ever see my dad to go to New Jersey. And in those days, uh, you know, a first-class ticket wasn't that expensive. So, of course, I was flying on the red eye first class. And they had the uh, helicopter you would take from Kennedy that would take you to the top of the Pan Am building in New York. So I'd always do the ticket, you know, the first class. If you first class, you got the helicopter for free. What? And you'd go, yeah, they would take amazing. you from the plane, literally. You'd grab your luggage and the helicopter would take you and land on the building. Because other, that's, that's otherwise, in getting days. a LaGuardia to Manhattan's a pain yeah, in the ass. Yeah, it's just getting, you know, in those days, there's no Uber attack. You took right. a town car, it was a little <laughs> town car or a stretcher. Now or there's Uber helicopter. Yeah, you know that, that was like Uber helicopter. Oh, I mean, well, I hate it. When they stopped that, that was a bummer because that was really nice to have that. It was yeah, so convenient. For sure. But I was coming home, you know, on the weekends, you know, to, to see my dad and traveling back and forth. So it was like a crazy, a crazy like year and a half. You know, yeah. there was a lot going on. Right. Um, and that was the first year and a half of being here in L.A., huh? Yeah. Wow. Wow. First wow. year and a half. You know, so I learned a lot of stuff really fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I guess. Yeah. I guess. And made a lot of friends. And Emily, in those days, a lot of actors on GH had homes up on Crestline, up by the, oh, yeah. which is up there. You know, Emily had one. Rachel Ames had one. I think John. Yeah, Rachel. Gina might have had, yeah. yeah, they all had them, you know? Yeah. yeah. So I was thinking of getting one up there. And, but Emily used to invite, like, every weekend I was up there. We would all go up there. And we'd party. Like, we were truly, like, Emily's son was always the troubadour. So we were going to the troubadour, like, once a week. Yeah. They had a, you know, a skate rink on La Cienega. Uh-huh. And we were all going skating, you know, in the skate rink. We had this life where we were all young. And, you know, yeah. when you're, you know, when you're 23, 24, you can yeah. sleep three hours a night. And you go out. And <laughs> yes. We were working long hours. Yes. Sure. Second dinner break. We had two dinner breaks every night. Second mm. dinner break was, like, 10, 30, 11 o'clock. It was oh, usually I, soup. First I, dinner break was, like, 7. I wow. do second dinner these days. <laughs> there you go. Second dinner is great. Second dinner. <laughs> yeah, but that's, yeah, 
that's alcohol. Always, it's, always, oh. it's, always, it's always pizza and wine. <laughs> that's, a, that's a nightcap. Yeah, yeah, you get your healthy dinner at 6.30 and then pizza and wine at 10. It's yeah. amazing. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. But so wow, weird. that's how late you guys were working. We worked long days. And we'd start. And I always had scenes with Jeannie, who was underage at that time. So oh, we right. always had to do right. her stuff first and get her out. Right. right. So in those days, we, stopped, we started taping at 4 o'clock. In the afternoon, that's when we start taping the show. Jeez. That's when you started. We started. Yeah, because they'd, they'd, they'd uh, rehearse. rehearse and block we'd have, yeah, we'd have a rehearsal, like our, our dress rehearsal. I think it was like two-ish. Done at three, get notes. So that went, and three then 30. it was live to tape. Yeah, it was pretty much, I mean, they took time, but it wasn't, um, and if Gloria wanted something done over, we would do it over, but it was like... Four o'clock was a late start. We took a long time on the scenes in those days. Yeah, yeah. And Our, the scenes even when I came, they, but they, yeah. they took a long, time. a long time. You were shooting in order at that point. Uh, yeah, we shot in order uh, unless it was a genie thing and we had to get her out. Ah, okay. at, at some point in there, they started doing biceps because they had to get her out at a certain mm, time. Yeah, but yeah, we used to do the show in order, which would be yeah. like a lot easier as an actor. Oh, you know? good yeah. gosh, that, yeah. for sure it would be. And then, you know, then we went to, later on, we went to block. With Gloria, I think we, I'm not even remembering. My God, did we do block tape? I know with Wendy, we did a lot of block tape. Gloria wasn't a real big block tape person. I can't remember. I was here the last year Gloria was here. That's when I got hired. Oh, okay. The very last year. Last year. So I I don't, I, I remember that we would, Start sometimes after I, I can't. Right? We it, it would, changed too. They would move it around. And it change changed it, a little bit because it yeah. went Capital Cities and it went Disney and then it went Network yeah. and they was doing all these focus groups and then we got what West Kenny and then we had Joe Hardy mm. and then Gloria came back. Glo- oh, maybe that's when Gloria. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, maybe that's the last time we had two Gloria Montes. Okay, there you go. Yeah. I was here the second shift. The second shift. Okay. Yeah, ninety one is when I came. So, oh wow! Okay, 1991. Yeah. So my girls, my daughters were born 90 and 91. So you came right in between Cassidy and Lacey. There you go. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> right then. Wow! And now look at them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Cassidy's amazing. married and has is pregnant. Wow! Baby girl, dude, December 30. How wow. fun! That is amazing. Congratulations! Thank you. How my fun. first human grandchild. You've I've been had a lot of fur, dog fur, fur, fur babies <laughs> all, and on TV I've been a grandma well, for 25 sure. years. Right. So, but now in real <laughs> life I'm finally it. having a real oh, grandchild. That's amazing. Congratulations. That's, right. that's so much fun. Wendy and where, where are me. they? Where do they live? They live in San Francisco. Oh, that's right. You told yeah. me. Yes. San Francisco. And they're very okay. happy. And my other daughter, the younger one, Cassie's my first, yeah. my eldest, whom anybody who watches General Hospital for a long time, Should be the, the baby th- blankets, I still have every one that you ever knitted and sent to me. Were oh, they ever so Were they ever in the uh, hospital set when... When the Christmas show? Christmas show? Absolutely. Yeah. In their so pajamas, fun. they'd come and be on the show. And did you know they did that, Brad? Oh, because uh, somebody read Night Before Christmas, right? And People was... would bring their kids. John yeah. would read yeah. Night yeah. Before John, Christmas. Yeah. And, yeah, and everybody that worked on the show, if you had young kids and you wanted them on, you could bring them. That is Actors, so cool. you know, yeah. fifth floor, the office people, yeah, the crew, yeah. everybody, the kids would come on. Yeah. And they'd some, some most of them would have their pajamas on because they'd be like patients in the hospital, and some would be all dressed up like they were siblings of the ones that were in the hospital. Yeah. So, you know, be always like, who's wearing what you know it would be really it was fun. a lot of fun that is it so was sweet. Great. great yeah so before we let you go because i know you're working today and we appreciate your time was there anything any story that like uh, when i got here it was uh uh the story that stood out for me was when you and brad did bj's heart trans heart was it a heart oh yeah tra- was it a heart transplant heart tra- we she was passing and we gave her heart to maxi that was one of the greatest stories yeah. ever i thought so but for you, what, you know, because obviously you've been here long enough, but <laughs> it, that's, yeah. I'm going to say that in a nice way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because there's times in your life where you're like, oh, that was a great story. Like when you first got here, there might have been a story like, oh, that was fun. I remember that one really well because we've all done a ton of stories. Yeah. And, and you know, sometimes you don't remember them all. You, you do know, until somebody says something. Until someone says it. And then you're like, thing. oh, I sure, think I yeah. kind of remember that. Yeah. Right? So. Were there are there ones that you look back on and you're like, oh, that was a cool one, this one and that one, or maybe it was just one, I don't know. But we just like to, I, I, you know, because I know that you've done a lot of stories and and I and have. I forget a lot of stuff and people are like, oh, remember that? I was like, yeah, actually, that was a cool story. So are there ones that kind of stand yeah, out? Let's see, Bobby Spencer, Brock Meyer, Jones, Cassadine, almost Jack Spencer. So, so there have name. been a lot of husbands and out of that <laughs> list, a lot of that I was with that love interest that I didn't marry on the show. Yeah. yeah. Like Ken Schreiner, like Rick Springfield. Uh, yeah. Oh, like yeah. Oh, right. Roy. And 
uh, DeLuca. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. On and on and on. You know, yeah. we, they, were, they were like bona fide love interests, but we didn't get married. So, yeah. Right. I've had, I have to say I feel really blessed that I have worked with amazing men on this show who yeah. are all dear to my heart, and most of them have remained friends. Right. Sure. Was Roy friends. DeLuca, was that A. Martinez? Yeah. Well, the first one um, was Asher Bronner. Okay, gotcha. And I, I loved Asher. So Asher came on. Our show was so popular in those days. Other networks were literally offering us contracts and money just not to resign on GH. I had other wow. networks calling me saying, we'll pay you upwards of a quarter of a million dollars a year just not to resign. You don't even have to come here and work. Just don't resign your GH contract. You can go audition for whatever you want, not daytime. I mean, our show is really popular. Wow. Our show, Dude, when everybody they're tell, wanted to When they're trying the to show. take the show Put down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, crazy. That's, that's amazing. Wow. So when you say how what it was in those days, everybody, cool. bookings, PAs. Oh, yeah, they gosh. Used to, you know, we all we got really lucky. Yeah. Not only for the confidence as young actors, but also they paid us a lot of money. Well, sure. Yeah, and, and there was a lot of opportunity there to grow and, and to, you know, expand. Yeah. So a lot of the you know the people that I worked with all those years, I got really close to them, and sure. I was happy with them. And um, you know, when you say storylines, oh God, I've had so many. I know you have. I was really happy when they brought um, Tony in. Yeah, I just thought that was a really Luke special story because I like the relationship. Yeah, yeah of course. You know, yeah. I like the relationship. Um, I, every I have to say, every single love interest that I had, I liked the way the story went mm -hmm. there was the one that was hard for me was Bobby and Damien when Damien and Lucy made a bet and he was trying to like bed Bobby and they made a bet that he could or you know he couldn't and um, I had a really hard time with that and I remember going up and saying I you know it's a it's a good story but it's kind of like disrespectful to women and see a man would make a bet and all that and she yeah. said yeah but women need to see this because this is what a lot of people go through right. so that yeah. was the hardest for me to wrap my head around as an actress because I felt that Bobby had come from such, you know, um, extenuating circumstances. She was a tough cookie. Yeah. And, um, but it just goes to show, you know, when it comes to love and your heart, everyone is vulnerable. Mm, and Bobby's sure. always been, you know, the earth mother, the nurse, you know, believes in love, believes in romance. Um, very kind, kind of a girl, still a girly girl. I mean, look at me with this hair at the my age. It's like crazy. But, you know, the character is the character. Yeah. You know? Sure, sure. And Bobby is as difficult as her life has been and it's challenging. She's still soft. She's not hard. Yeah. She's not bitter. She's not angry. Yeah. Um, and she's given a lot and a lot has been taken from her. You know, losing BJ and has had some really hard things. Her brother, her parents were not available to her, but yet she has a big heart and she still sees the world, you know, as a beautiful place. Yeah. And I always loved the difference between that. Luke was always, everybody's out to screw you. And Bobby was like, no, people are loving. They're kind. <laughs> you know, they're generous. Be good. Yeah. I loved that you, to show that you can have two people come from the same family and have very different takes and diff very different functionality on how they live their lives. Yes. And I learned that as a mother. I mean, when I had my real-life daughters, and they come out, like Cassidy's one way and Lacey's completely the other way. Yeah. Not only in, you know, pers looks, but in personality. Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Lacey said to me once when she was little, she goes, Mommy, because she's got brown hair. Lacey, I call her my white meat, my dark meat girl. <laughs> because Cassidy's like blonde hair, big blue eyes, white skin. Yeah. My body, like right. short boobs, you know, curvy 5'3", and Lacey looks like a Victoria's Secret model. Tall, thin, model body, that olivey skin, yeah. long brown hair, you know, can pull a dress off the rack and you know it's going to look gorgeous. She doesn't even have to try it on. So when she's little, she says to me one day, Mommy, who's prettier, Cassidy or me? And I say, well, you know, First, it's what's in the heart. It's not all about the looks. <laughs> right. But looks-wise, some people are going to think Cassidy's prettier, and some people are going to think you are prettier. It's type. You look completely different. Right. So there's no competition. Sure. You know, you're never going to date the same guy because the same guy isn't, you know, if he likes one of you, he's going to go after the other one. So don't worry about it, honey. So she goes, yeah, but they sure do like that blonde hair. I said, <laughs> well, yeah, but Cindy Crawford is the most famous model right now, and she has brown hair just like you. Oh. So... Lo and behold, like literally the next week, I'm in the lounge at the airport, and who's sitting right next to me in the lounge to get on a flight? Red Eye, Cindy Crawford. I'm like, wow. now Cindy Crawford lived with Randy Gerber in our yeah. neighborhood in the Malibu, but she wasn't a girlfriend. I'd see her in like in coogies and the stuff, you know, sure. but I wasn't going to like ever go up and talk right. to her. 
So she's sitting there, and I'm like, mm. I'm like, no, I'm not going to bug her. I'll just leave her. When we get on the plane, she's literally sitting in the seat right in front of me. And, you know, and so I'm looking for a magazine with a picture of Cindy Crawford. And I'm like, I'm, I'm freaking, I can't find, you know, there's no women's magazines. I'm like, excuse me, Miss Crawford. She turns around. She goes, oh, I know you from the neighborhood. I've seen you on your show. And I'm like, oh. Now I'm like, perfect. Okay, good, perfect. <laughs> yeah. I said, so I tell her the story about Lacey. You know, Cindy Crawford's the most famous model, and she has brown hair. So she drew a picture. I said, I'm looking for a magazine picture. I haven't got one. Of, I can't find. She drew a picture of a woman with curly hair, stick figure, to Lacey, you know, with love from Cindy Crawford. Wow. And Lacey kept that in her bedroom for like, I don't know, until we moved out of that house. That's it was awesome. like on the mirror on amazing. her wall. That's so how so sweet so was that? That's amazing. So sweet. That's amazing. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and I, through, even throughout the years that you worked here, you still have been able to do other things as well. Yeah. And so, and and any highlights from those? A lot. Well, a few films. You know, it was, oh, the film thing, not that I don't like working in the movies, but it takes so long. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's kind of like, you know, we fly by the seat of our pants here. Yeah. You know, we do our, and, and on those days, 35 to 50 pages a day when I was on every day. I mean, it was right. a lot. When you came on, you worked a lot, really fast. You were on like every day, and I was on every day. I remember you were working, and I was like, oh, Steve Burton's here. Like, every time I'm here, Steve Burton's here. You know what I mean? Yeah. But a lot of people didn't work five a week, but... People that were on regular would work three a week. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So so it was like, it was just... You were used to that pace. Used to the pace, yeah. yeah. And I always had a pilot out clause in my contract. Yeah. Um, but they always gave me great incentives to stay, which made me really happy. Like when my I raised my children and I worked every day, but I got they got to a point where they would arrange for me to get out so I could see them at some point after school. They I could have their birthdays off. I could have certain yeah. legal holidays yeah. off. You know what I mean? So I could be... The mom, I want to be the mom that showed up. If you miss sure, your kids, yeah. you know, you miss it. So that worked out really well. Now, like, I work a lot. I, I mean, I work on my GH, you know, maybe three yeah. times a month I'm in here. But I do The Bay, oh, right. um, on, which is on Prime Video on Amazon. Mm-hmm, yeah. And I've been mm-hmm. doing that now for uh, God, six, seven. I was doing that. It was Lacey's first year in college. And we're in San Diego. And it's in July when the parents come on the... You know, campus. Yeah. And my phone rings, and it's Tristan Rogers, and he's like, ah, "I'm doing this, you know, show. Um, Gregory Martin is our. He's been on GH sometimes. And put, would you be interested in coming on our show?" I said, "You're doing it." And he goes, "Yeah." And I said, "So who?" He goes, "Oh, Mary Beth Evans is doing it, and he's naming like all these great yeah. people." Yeah. I said, well, "Yeah." He said, "All right. Um, can Gregory call you tomorrow, and you can talk about the part?" So Gregory called me, and I said, "Yeah, I'll do the show." Sure. So I'm doing that now for uh, eight years. Wow! Wow! And we're on our fifth fifth um, season, and he just told me the other day we're going to be on in Australia. They picked up our regular oh, TV hey. in Australia. Regular TV, there regular you go. TV. That's good. So I said to him, "Oh, will they catch up?" Because we got fired. Because when Rick, when I was working with Rick Springfield, his mom was in Australia. Yeah. And it took. They were like two or three years behind. Yeah. She had to wait like a couple of years before yeah. she could see him sure. on TV. Yeah. yeah. So we're shooting. We were shooting up. Um, you know. Um, uh, Santa Inez. Let's oh, yeah. week at a ranch. We shoot mm-hmm. up there. It's all location. There's no studio. Yeah. yeah. So that's like that's film to me because it's all yeah. you know yeah, digital fun. cameras. Yeah. 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 So it's it's a different way of working. But I really. But also we move fast. It's sure. not like diddle around and take a whole day on you know two pages. Yeah. Right. Shoot, of course. We move. Yeah. Yeah. So I do that and I do another a decorating show where I oh, co-host cool. um, called Make This Place Your Home and it's all locations in the United States again and it's we're sponsored based show but it's fun and I love decorating yeah so that's great. that's been a Does you know every place thing. turn out lavender yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no more lavender it's out right now oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. gray was the big thing last year you yeah, know totally. and a touch of pink yeah. now this yeah. year you know it's, yeah. Yeah, you gotta keep yeah. up yeah. you gotta keep up <laughs> Well, you're talking to the wrong guys. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they have hows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so uh, if I can say something before, because I know sure. I can tell you're getting ready to close up in the show. Um, we have an event coming up um, for leukemia research. Yeah. As I me- mentioned earlier, my dad had leukemia um, and passed away of it um, at the age of was diagnosed at 53 and gone at 54. Oh, in those gosh. days, we did not have the research that we have now, and yeah. now we have incredible, you know, we can do incredible things. Yeah. Leukemia is no longer necessarily a death sentence for people. Yeah. So anyway, wow. we have an event, come fundraising, we're doing this every year. It's the 31st year. Wow. Um, at the Marriott Marquis um, in Times Square in New York. Yeah, really? On Monday night, November 18th. 
Monday yes. night, November 18th. 18th. Where can people go to, to get the information? So what, what kind of event is it? Is it's it a, a like it's, it's great. singing, dancing? Is it a Broadway show people? That's why it's on Monday night. The Broadway yeah, show people yeah. come in and they sing. Amazing. And it's like whoever will show up. And it's always amazing people because they've been so supportive. Everybody does sure. one or two songs. It's yeah. like the most incredible show. And, you know, some of the soap people pop by. I mean, that's getting harder because... There's no yeah, show. there's no, no soap yeah. anymore Hello. in New York. Yeah. But a lot of the, anybody for here, they're back and forth. Right. And sure. some of them didn't move. So we get a lot of support, and it's early in the evening. It's like after work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, where, and where can they find find just information on it? Go that? online. Um, Jane Alyssa, okay? Jane Alyssa. So, Jane Alyssa. Okay. Com, and then on her, on her website, it's Hats for Health. All the money gets donated. Hats, Hats for, for Health. health. So just click on that on the website, and they'll give you a ticket. It's not, a, it's not an expensive ticket. It's not even lo- – what we started doing since it's Monday night, it's um, – I don't even think it's a, like a dinner this year. It's like coffee and desserts and crudite. Yeah. So it's so, because so it's all the money goes into the not get spent sure. on food. Right. right. And sure. it's in the Murray Marquis. I mean, what's yeah, that all that's like? amazing. It's fabulous. We used yeah. to stay there for the Emmys sometimes. It's yeah. Great. It's nice there. Yeah, yeah it's, it's cool. Nice there. Oh, oh, man. So. Well, <laughs> wonderful. And you're on social media, right? People can, I am. People can find you there. If they, I'm sure anybody that knows you has found you already, but just in case, what, where, oh, what's your – it's at you. Jackie Zeman or at Jackie um, I, on Twitter, um, it's at Jackie Zeman, right. J-A-C-K-I-E, right. Zeman. And on Instagram, it's at Jacqueline, which is J-A-C-K-L-Y-N, dot Zeman. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you so Jackie, much. Jackie, this has been amazing. <laughs> this is so great. I mean, what? I'm waiting for the movie. I know. <laughs> I'm well, waiting I mean, for the movie. Yeah, once I mean, come, this is a movie. This well, is a lifetime movie. What's going to happen is people are going to listen to this, and, and maybe some people knew some of these details that we didn't. But we're going to come back, and we're going to we're going to hone in on a few of these stories, and either <laughs> either just go into more detail on another podcast or write a freaking movie. Yeah. I have lots more stories. I'm so. sure you do. Man. But we're going to have you back. We're going to have you back anyway. Thank so. you. Yes. So <laughs> thank, thank you so, you so much, Jackie. Jackie. <laughs> what a life, dude. <laughs> dude, I. See, this is why we do this because oh my God. I had no idea. It, what? Uh, wait, first of all, we just we, we, we glossed over a lot of well, the I things. Well, I mean, you said this during the episode, but like. No, I know, but, but still. Like, I mean, I, wanna, I, I wanted to lean into every single one of those things. Well, of course, but. Jackie Zeman P.I.? What? <laughs> <laughs> totally. Come I had no on. idea. Pre med P I Playboy Bunny? Well, and at the in the at, at, at the club when it was like that was the place to be all from the ages of like 15 to 19 that's amazing what a four year span pre med she crushed it dancing in the like i crushed it dancing in caracas caracas and then on uh, and then all the soap operas and then you asked her the weird question about the love scene that was awkward. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was awkward. But thank you. That was awkward. But the on. one thing you're going to ask about live TV and you go, oh, the love scenes must be amazing. No, not amazing, but you pervert. Gee, <laughs> they must be weird. Because, like, here we get to edit them and, like, uh, that, but that's, that's a- just so funny that that's the first thing that you thought of during when she's telling us that. Well, because here's what I was thinking about. Okay. Uh, when she's talking about, like, being You're still to... thinking about the Playboy Bunny. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> no, like, when the, when you have to, like, either stretch for time or go faster, like... The... <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> no. You're so stupid. In my, in, in, in my brain, I can imagine, like, with my words, thinking through that. Sure. But if you have... Not certain... with your actions. But if you have certain... Cor- <laughs> if you have certain choreography in certain... Like sure, you just throw a couple extra kisses in there, dude. What's but, the problem here? What's the problem? I don't know. It's just like I, I, if they touch your foot, you're done. Right. If they don't, you just keep kissing. I just, yeah, yeah. It just, just seemed make like... it look good. <laughs> yeah, it's just... such an amateur at love scenes. I, I understand. I know. I, know. <laughs> I mean, you can't even like, but just roll around extra on the bed. It's not a big deal. Okay, fair enough. I just, Come on. yeah, I don't know. I just for, I, for for some reason that like, I wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> you poor guy. <laughs> It's okay, buddy. Yeah, yeah. so... Uh, I'm going to get but... you a mannequin and we'll rehearse. <laughs> <laughs> that one that was in Franco's apartment? Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that rubber guy? <laughs> yeah. What is that guy... Isn't that guy the... Isn't that supposed to be like a someone that you kick or punch? Or is it a model to hang clothes on? What is it? I don't know, dude. Uh, Are you a... really asking me these things? Well, I know... Okay. <laughs> anyway, enough about the rubber guy in Franco's. Okay, Jackie was amazing. Oh, she was just, just great. And we'll have her back because there's, there's more stories I mean, that we just glossed over. So anyway. I know I, she just kept going from story. I know. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. 